America was the first to harness the phenomenal revolutionary power of black gold. In the fields, machines replaced men. A liter of oil generates as much energy as 100 pairs of hands in 24 hours. In the United States, only 3 million farmers are left. They produce enough grain to feed 2 billion people. But most of that grain is not used to feed people. Here, and in all other industrialized nations, is transformed into livestock feed or biofuels. The pocket of sunshine's energy chased away the specter of drought that stalked farmland. No spring escapes the demands of agriculture, which accounts for 70% of humanity's water consumption. In nature, everything is linked. The more a country develops, the more meat its inhabitants consume. How can growing worldwide demand be satisfied without recourse to concentration camp style cattle farms? Faster and faster, like the life cycle of livestock which may never see a meadow, manufacturing meat faster than the animal has become a daily routine. In these vast food lots trampled by millions of cattle, not a blade of grass grows. A fleet of trucks from every corner of the country brings in tons of grain, soy meal, and protein-rich granules that will become tons of meat. The result is that it takes 100 liters of water to produce one kilogram of potatoes, 4,000 liters for one kilo of rice, and 13,000 liters for one kilo of beef. Not to mention the oil guzzled in the production process and transport. Since 1950, fishing catches have increased five-fold from 18 to 100 million metric tons a year. Thousands of factory ships are emptying the oceans. Three quarters of fishing grounds are exhausted, depleted, or in danger of being so. Most large fish have been fished out of existence since they have no time to reproduce. We are destroying the cycle of a life that was given to us. At the current rate, all fish stocks are threatened with exhaustion. The wetlands represent 6% of the surface of the planet. Under their calm water lies a veritable factory where plants and microorganisms patiently filter the water and digest all the pollution. These marshes are indispensable environments for the regeneration and purification of water. They are sponges that regulate the flow of water. They absorb it in the wet season and release it in the dry season. In our race to conquer more land, we have reclaimed them as pasture for our livestock, or as land for agriculture, or building. In the last century, half of the world's marshes were drained. 
We know neither their richness nor their role. All living matter is linked. Water, air, soil, trees. The world's magic is right in front of our eyes. Trees breathe groundwater into the atmosphere as light mist. They form a canopy that alleviates the impact of heavy rains. The forests provide the humidity that is necessary for life. They store carbon, containing more than all the Earth's atmosphere. They are the cornerstone of the climactic balance on which we all depend. The trees of the primary forests provide a habitat for three quarters of the planet's biodiversity. That's to say, of all life on Earth. These forests provide the remedies that cure us. The substances secreted by these plants can be recognized by our bodies. Our cells talk the same language. We are of the same family. But in barely 40 years, the world's largest rainforest, the Amazon, has been reduced by 20%. The forest gives way to cattle ranches or soybean farms. 95% of these soya beans are used to feed livestock and poultry in Europe and Asia. And so, a forest is turned into meat. The clock of climate change is ticking in these magnificent landscapes. Here in Siberia, and elsewhere across the globe. It is so cold that the ground is constantly frozen. It's known as permafrost. Under its surface lies a climactic time bomb, methane, a greenhouse gas 20 times more powerful than carbon dioxide. If the permafrost melts, the methane released would cause the greenhouse effect to race out of control with consequences no one can predict. We would literally be an unknown territory. Humanity has no more than 10 years to reverse the trend and avoid crossing into this territory. Life on Earth as we have never known it. We have created phenomena we cannot control. Since our origins, water, air, and forms of life are intimately linked. But recently, we have broken those links. Let's face the facts. We must believe what we know.
All that we have just seen is a reflection of human behavior. We have shaped the Earth in our image. We have very little time to change. How can this century carry the burden of nine billion human beings if we refuse to be called to account for everything we alone have done? The cost of our actions is high. Others pay the price without having been actively involved. I have seen refugee camps as big as cities sprawling in the desert. How many men, women, and children will be left by the wayside tomorrow? Let's be responsible consumers. Think about what we buy. It's too late to be a pessimist. I've seen agriculture on a human scale. It can feed the whole planet if meat production doesn't take the food out of people's mouths. It's time to come together. What's important is not what's gone, but what remains. We still have half the world's forests, thousands of rivers, lakes, and glaciers, and thousands of thriving species. We know that the solutions are there today. We all have the power to change. So what are we waiting for?